We continue our lessons in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus says to us this morning, Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you have a forgiving spirit? Most of us would answer that question with a yes and no answer. When it comes to forgiveness, there are always limitations and conditions, circumstances and qualifications to that answer. Yet forgiveness is central to the living of the Christian faith. We pray every week in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. About 90 seconds ago, we declared in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness is so powerful that it can frustrate us and frighten us into detrimental behaviors. Forgiveness can also free us to love more deeply. In the lesson I just read, forgiveness frustrates Peter. So frustrating that he asked Jesus, well, just how many times do I have to forgive somebody? For Peter had heard Jesus teaching about the necessity of forgiveness in the parable of the par uh, prodigal son. Jesus saw forgiveness and acted in the attempting stoning of the woman caught in adultery. Peter, by now, is beginning to understand that this thing called forgiveness is an integral part of Jesus' new kingdom. Peter knew that forgiveness was both difficult and demanding. The Labor Leadership Committee is now meeting, trying to secure leadership for 2000, uh, 2015. And at almost every call we make, we are asked, what does this job require? What are you asking me to do? That's the same thing Peter wanted to know, what was required of him. So the never bashful Peter Ask, well, how many times do I forgive a church member who sins against me? Thank goodness for Peter. He always asks the good questions. Forgiveness is very difficult unless we follow Jesus' example. A few days after President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, a Presbyterian church in Michigan wrote to the wife of Lee Harvey Oswald. They had heard that she wished to remain in America. She wanted to become a citizen. She wanted to learn English. And so the, that church invited her to come to their community. They promised to find her a home, help her learn English, and help her make a fresh start for her life. People all around the nation heard the church's offer and began to write letters, critical letters, to the church. One person even wrote, I never heard of a church doing anything like this before. Well, the pastor of the church painstakingly, and probably with more pains than takingly, uh, answered each and every letter that the church received saying that he understood their feelings about the Oswalds. He ended each letter with, the only thing you have not shown us is that what we have done would not have been done by our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is not based on popularity, not determined by the latest Gallup poll, but by biblical mandate. And forgiveness is never easy, but it is always, always the will of God. How many of you all are old movie buffs? People like to watch the old, particularly old black and white movies. Mm -hmm. There's an old movie entitled Stars in My Crown. Anybody see it? Mm -hmm. You know this movie. An elderly African American man owns a little farm outside of a town, and a precious metal is found in the vicinity of the farm. And suddenly the pressure is on the man to sell his farm so the town may prosper. He refuses to sell. The people in the area would not take no for an answer. They did everything they could, could think of to try to get him to move on. They burned down his barn, they shot uh, birdshot into his house, and then they threatened to hang him by sundown of the next day if he did not agree to sell. The Methodist pastor heard about the trouble and went to visit the old man. At sundown the next day, all the leading citizens of the town showed up at this gentleman's farm. They were prepared to hang the man if he refused once again to sell. The farmer came out on the porch to meet the mob, wearing his best clothes. He said that he was ready to die and had asked the pastor to write down his last will and testament, which he wanted read. The pastor began reading the will. The man had willed the farm to the banker who had seemed so hell-bent on getting it. He gave his rifle to another man who had learned to hunt with him. He gave his fishing pole to another who had learned to fish by his side. The old farmer gave away everything that he had to the people who were prepared to kill him. Goodness in the face of such animosity was more than any of those men could tolerate. And one by one, the lynch mob disappeared into the darkness. Amen. The pastor's grandson had watched everything from a distance. And as everyone slunk off, he ran up to his grandfather and said, What kind of will was that, granddaddy? That, my son, is the will of God. The farmer was able to forgive because he had been forgiven by God. In turn, then he could pass on that forgiveness to others. If you find that your ability to forgive is getting more difficult, perhaps it's because you are not as close to Jesus as you need to be. God's forgiveness of us is contingent upon our forgiveness of others. The Bible is very clear about that. Right after Jesus says you must forgive 77 times, Jesus says this to Peter. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When the king began the reckoning, the one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all of his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before the king and said, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, 
The Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw his fellow slave into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other slaves of the king saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the king all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned the man and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I have had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. If we do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will God forgive us. The love of God cannot enter an unforgiving heart. We cannot pass on what we have not yet received. Once we genuinely experience forgiveness, we can do nothing else but forgive. Not forgiving has the effect of locking the door on our heart from the inside. And since God never forces his way in, only we can unlock our heart from the inside. The 20th century theologian Frederick Bruckner said that of the seven deadly sins, anger is probably the most fun. To lick your wounds, to smack your lips over the grievances long past, to roll over your tongue the prospect of better confrontations still to come, to savor to the last toothsome morsel, both the pain you are given and the pain you are giving back. Ah, tis a feast fit for a king. The chief drawback is that what you are wolfing down is yourself. The carcass left after the feast is you. Unless we forgive 70 times, 77 times, 70 times, 70 times, Jesus will never live inside of us. The Christian way is a life of love and forgiveness. Yeah. Christian is a lifestyle. Real love can only be born after we have experienced God's forgiveness in Jesus. Remember, Jesus' forgiveness is both real and liberating. It will set you free to forgive others and free you to forgive yourself. Do you have a forgiving spirit? Hmm.